Hey guys, welcome back for another Dogmanship Training Tip Thursday. <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister there. Um, so this Saturday, or last Saturday, I ran a full day workshop for members of the Dogmanship Training Academy. And it was an in-person workshop and it was really good, but there was something that came up a lot. And so I thought I'd make that this week's tip because obviously it's something that people need to work on. Um, and that tip is that working to the edge of your dog's comfort zone is how you get progression and how you get progression quite quickly, but without stressing your dog out too much. So what I mean by that is if you are training your dog in your dog's comfort zone, where essentially they're, that's something that they know and that they're familiar with, that's fine because it means that we get the reps up of positives. So that's really good thing. It can help build confidence and it's a good thing to do when they're feeling, you know, a bit off their game or they're a bit stressed about something because it's something familiar. They know how to do it and they can just nail it. But if you continue in that spot, you will never progress. On the opposite end of the scale, if you are going to just work your dog where it's really challenging for them all the time and you're constantly pushing, 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 pushing right to the other end, then it's going to become quite stressful and the training experience isn't going to be particularly rewarding and enjoyable for you or your dog and you're going to find that your dog loses motivation really quickly. So what you're looking for is that borderline between that, where you're at the edge of your comfort zone. Now, what that will look like is that when you're training, your dog may make a couple of mistakes, but they're able to get it right quite quickly after those mistakes. So if you're practicing sit, for example, you might practice sit in your living room and they're doing it perfectly and it's no big deal. But then when you add in a tennis ball or you add in somebody walking through the front door, that's a little bit more challenging. But if you were to take that dog who's just learning it in the living room and hasn't practiced anywhere else and then go, right, now you have to do it at a children's birthday party with balloons and food and kids running around, that's throwing them in the deep end. That's too far at the other way. So what you would start to do is, for example, you would have your dog in a sit and then you would have the tennis ball like 10 or 20 meters away and you'd move the tennis ball around a bit. If they were finding that too easy, you go a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer until a mistake happens. That's a mistake that is a challenge for them. They've obviously, they, they've learned, going to learn something, but it's not so hard for them to get it right that you're going to need to give lots and lots of corrections to get it right. Or they're just not, they're not going to be able to get it right. They're, they're going to end up with a failure and they're not going to finish on a reward. So what you want is they muddle it up a little bit. You show them what you want and the behavior that you need them to do. They get it right. You go, woohoo, you nailed it and you can praise them. And then the next time you finished on a high and then you can progress even further. If you're getting that balance right of having a, like a little bit of a mistake, but then able to correct it and move on and reward, then you will find that your training will progress way faster because you're constantly challenging them, but you're not throwing them in the deep end. Now, I actually find that people tend to do um, either end of the scale more often than they will work in the middle. And so it takes a bit of like conscious thinking from us when we're training to be able to do that. So I want you to think when you're training, am I stopping my dog from making a mistake here because I'm avoiding mistakes? Now, that's a pretty common thing. Nobody wants their dog to muddle it up. Everybody wants it to look really good. Everybody wants it to them to get it right all the time. Like that's normal. We all want that. But if you do that, as I said, your dog's not going to progress. And so what you need to be mindful of is, am I preventing mistakes here? And a classic one for this is when we teach them to wait at the door for an invitation to come in. And we do this without using obedience commands. It's just implied that when the door is open, you have to wait for an invitation to come in. And often when we do this, the owners sort of stand in a way that they're using their body to sort of block the doorway a little bit, or they're sort of putting their hands out and blocking them. So to prevent their dog making them a mistake rather than just letting the mistake happen and then using it as a learning opportunity. Um, so sometimes we accidentally prevent it without even consciously realizing that we're doing it. So it's really important to think that through after your training session and go, did I challenge them enough? Now, on the other end of the scale, people go, well, it's my dog's first week of training and their problem is reactivity to other dogs. So I'm going to go for a walk where there's going to be dogs barking at us through the fence the whole way. And obviously that is not a great scenario either. You need to work on getting those skills that you need to be able to apply there with less distraction first, with less going on, without throwing them so far out of their comfort zone that they can't even think straight. So that then when you work and progress to that, you will get to the point of training there 
faster if you just do a tiny bit over their comfort zone during training sessions. So I hope that makes sense. If anybody has any questions about that, please feel free to let me know. Um, I'm running a free mini course at the moment. You can check it out at dogmanshiptraining.com. Hope everybody's having a lovely day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.